And there's a lot going on with the combine this week. And, you know, I start to look at these running backs who are available. And I don't know if this trickles down to, let's say, junior high or high school, where your great athletes who were normally your running backs now want to play a different position. If you have aspirations on playing uh, that position at a higher level, would you rather do that as a running back or maybe be a cornerback where you can make more money? You know, the, the running back, aside from the quarterback, but the running back, you're getting the ball 25, 30 times in high school, maybe even in college, or at least you used to. And I wonder if we're going to see less marquee players, athletes, want to play that position, and then maybe they want to play something else. And uh, you start to look at Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, Tony Pollard, Derrick Henry. They're all available. Uh, And then you start to look at the franchise tag for a running back and what you're going to be able to earn. Saquon, maybe you get a contract, maybe, with the, the Giants. Or Tony Pollard, man, I thought he had a bright future. Now all of a sudden is Dallas, you know, in the market for another running back here. Derrick Henry, Hall of Famer, question mark. Now he'll be available. Josh Jacobs with the Raiders, all available. Feels like any running back that uh, was coming up for a new contract is going to be available for anybody because it doesn't feel like these teams are going to franchise tag. Now, I'd rather get the one-year franchise tag instead of the, like, one-year great instead of three years good because then maybe you get franchised the next year or maybe you get, you know, a three-year contract. But you start to look, and there aren't many running backs where you go, okay, I'm going to invest with that that uh, player at that position. I mean, Christian McCaffrey's the unicorn in a variety of ways. Alvin Kamara got that money, but Alvin Kamara has tailed off. But, you know, you have Christian McCaffrey. Alvin Kamara, that's a mistake. Uh, And then you start to look at Isaiah Pacheco. Isaiah Pacheco, by the time he gets to the point where he might get paid, because that's a seventh-round pick out of Rutgers, and here he is with a couple of Super Bowls, he runs really hard. And then all of a sudden, he's not going to be running, you know, as hard as he used to. You want to get paid. And... He's not going to get paid these four years. But his contributions to the Chiefs, they don't win these Super Bowls without Isaiah Pacheco. But you got a seventh-round draft pick here. You're not going to take one in the first round. I mean, Saquon Barkley is probably the last running back who's going to be taken in the top ten. Does that sound about right? Has there been any other running backs taken? But I wonder about the position as we move forward. And at some point, do you say... I don't want to be a running back. I want to be a cornerback. Look at the money you can make as a cornerback or as a linebacker. Or you want to be an edge rusher. Yes, Mark. And less punishment, too. If you're a corner, yeah, like you're not getting contact every single play like you are a running back and you're running the ball 25, 30 times a game. You know, Saquon Barkley had 670 rushes at Penn State. So we already took a beating in the Big Ten before he even got to the NFL. Okay, I'm going to offer up something free of charge. Running backs in college should be able to leave after their sophomore year. How about that? They're, they're ready to go. We've seen that before where, you know, if it's Marshall Falk or Adrian Peterson or Herschel Walker, these guys are ready to go. But now we're going to tack on at least one more year of wear and tear and the possibility of injury. You're really only good at that position for about five years, it feels like maybe six years at the most. So you might get a second con. Remember Zeke Elliott came out, boom, 1,500 yards. Leonard Fournette came out, ready to go. But all the wear and tear, and then you get to the NFL, you only have so many carries in your body. You just do. And then you start to slow down. But maybe we give them some kind of exception and say you get to come out after your sophomore year. If, if you're drafted. Yes, Heaton. According to uh, this random website that I'm looking at, uh, the average um, career lifespan for an NFL player is 3.3 years. Yeah. Right? A running back is 2.57. The highest um, in years, 
You want to guess? Mm -mm. Kicker, punter. All right. And that average career is 4.87 years. Okay. So there's not a huge difference between the longest and the shortest. Okay. Although the wear and tear on your body, having seen Eric Dickerson have a hard time sitting in a chair to uh, Earl Campbell needing assistance and then a wheelchair eventually. Like those guys, they it takes a toll on them in a variety of ways. That position, probably more so than any other position. Because you're you're basically saying, I'm running the football, tackle me. So yeah. you're, you're, it's like there's no secret here. You try to avoid getting tackled. Yeah, Paul. You can make the case that Isaiah Pacheco has earned a raise, has earned a contract. Oh, sure. He, I mean, clearly, yeah. he makes eight hundred, made eight hundred seventy thousand dollars this season. He's got very little bonuses because they don't have to pay him any bonuses. He's completely under contract for twenty twenty four and twenty twenty five at a million dollars per season. Yeah. yeah, he'll be twenty seven years old, free agent. And I doubt if somebody's going to give him a long term contract there. Yeah, Marv. Yeah, I'm just thinking about all the wear and tear before they even get into the NFL. Adrian Peterson, 1,900 yards. He had 339 carries his freshman year. And then he's like, I got to play two more seasons before I even can consider yeah. going into the NFL. I think that we should have an exemption. Would you have to, let's say, okay, so let's say it was Leonard Fournette-ish type player was playing right now. And after his sophomore year, he petitions the league. And he has to be maybe viewed as a top first round or second round running back. And then... It would be that type of exemption? Maybe, maybe. And look, I'm just spitballing here, but I, I think at that position, who was the, uh, was it Lattimore? Uh, uh, Marshawn Lattimore, yeah. South Carolina. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Terrible in the injury. Yes. And look, can it happen your sophomore year and your freshman year? Yes, it can. But the more times you carry, the more potential for something serious there. And at that position, now you can come back. Willis McGahee came back. But it just feels like, does anybody want to play running back anymore? Because it's not really you're a running back. Isaiah Pacheco is, but Christian McCaffrey is a dual threat there. And I don't know if they try to reclassify that position so these players can get paid. If not, it feels like you're, the talent level at that position will drop off because they're going to go where you can make the most money. Yeah, Marv. You know, do they do like the uh, with the quarterbacks, like in the Rivals 100 for high school recruits, they do dual threat quarterback. Do they do dual threat running back? Like this guy can also go out into the slot and be like a Le'Veon Bell in his prime or Christian McCaffrey where it's like, all right, he can go out into the slot also. Or, or like Debo Samuel could be a running back, but, you know, he wisely is a wide receiver. That's, you know, go back to when Jimmy Graham, he was a tight end, wanted to be classified as a wide receiver, and the reason is he wanted to be paid more. Uh, Vernon Davis, I think, also tried to do that as well. Yes, Paulie. And if you look at the, you said uh, running back will not be taken in the top five, top ten. You're probably right. I mean, uh, it's been de-emphasized on the college level. Saquon's an anomaly. Okay, but who is the running back that's available this year? I don't have a running back in looking at four different mock drafts in the first round. Okay. I don't have a running back in a couple mock drafts until the third round and a couple in the second round. Yeah. There's not a alpha dog. Yeah, it feels like you can get a running back. We've said this before. You can get him somewhere, you know, depending on how good your scouting department is, but you can find these running backs. And then you basically plug them in and tell them to run really hard. And then we'll see you in four years as we say goodbye to you. Yes, Marv. When's the last time a MVP-level running back was a part of a Super Bowl champion. Like you, the Patriots, they just did running back by committee. Right now with the Chiefs, Isaiah Pacheco, seventh round pick. So there really hasn't been an Adrian Peterson type. Like Terrell Davis. Right. That's probably the last one, maybe. I mean, McCaffrey's in the conversation for MVP. Uh, but yeah. once again, he's an anomaly. Uh, how he's used in that offense. Uh, but he led the league in rushing. Yes, Mark. If Kyle Shanahan would have ran him more in the third quarter, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. Bloop, 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 bloop. yeah. Yes, uh, Seaton. You know, the last one uh, that was like really like a featured super stud running back is probably Marshawn Lynch. But that was, that's over 10 years ago. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's a long time ago. Yeah. 